Uh, we're joined now by Stuart Weir, journalist and consultant and longtime friend of Doddy Weir, who has co-written Doddy's autobiography, My Name's Doddy, which is out now. Uh, thanks for joining us, Stuart. Good afternoon. Um, first questions first. Um, it's our standard question for anyone that comes on the podcast is what club socks you'd wear if you were called up for the Barbarians? Well, I would love to make it something exotic and say something like the Argentinian Pumas, uh, but unfortunately it would have to be uh, something like uh, DL High School for my pupils. Um, so it would be uh, blue socks, um, very very plain, very simple, um, and those would be the, the, the socks I would, uh, I would pick. Uh, when, I went, when I was at school, um, rugby was just a, a fledgling sport. Uh, we got a new rector at the school who decided that football was not for him, and introduced all sorts of things like hockey, which I uh, became the, the captain of the hockey team and rugby, but because we were limited in numbers, uh, several of us ended up decanting to DL High School, uh, and then on to the FPs, so I was playing for DL High School former pupils when I was 15, um, they didn't have a coach side then, this is way before <laughs> anything like that, so um, you know, you, you always had the, you always had the uh, the kind of feeling that one one or two of the guys were actually sort of taking it easy on you, except when I played one day at Cather Queen's Park and I was stuck out in the wing, and somebody said we need somebody to play scrum half, and I said well I'll play scrum half for you, and they went okay, uh, and the first scrum I picked the ball up was caught by the opposition number eight, <laughs> and th- and thrown onto the top of the scrum, and you'd all these guys basically start to punch and fight with each other because they, they they'd never. They'd never felt anybody landing on top of them before at a scrum. <laughs> maybe underneath, <laughs> maybe underneath them, but never on top of them. Uh, and, at, and at that point in time, uh, the captain that day suggested that I went back out onto the wing and uh, I'd be safer out there rather than fighting with an entire an entire scrum with two sets of forwards. <laughs> so did you did you take your rugby much beyond school then? Uh, well, I I, I did, well I, I sort of did. Um, but then uh, it was back in the day when if you picked up enough injuries, <laughs> you missed work, um, and that wasn't very um, that wasn't uh, looked kindly upon. It was actually frowned upon by your uh, employers. Uh, and after that, I had one or two, one or two injuries, one or two actually quite bad injuries, and I just decided to call it a day. Um, and uh, you know, and that that was it. It was, it was what could have been. I could have been a contender. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, it wasn't to be. Yeah. So you've you've known Doddy Weir for about twenty years then. So how how did you both meet? Uh, well, he he was a, a young giraffe um, <laughs> when he was selected for Scotland for the the World Cup in nineteen ninety one. He was a bit of a kind of uh, how can you put it a, a left field selection. He he made his debut the season before. He would missed out in the the Five Nations as it was. But uh, one or two of the more senior players realised that the way rugby was going, you needed somebody who had a natural, a natural jump uh, and who was actually a bit of an athlete uh, and Doddy ticked those boxes. So here he had a guy who, you know, he actually has a, in his day, had quite a, an unnatural leap. He actually could leap a lot higher than, you know, Guys of a similar stature and a similar similar height, so that was um, that got him into the team. Uh, I covered a bit of the '91 World Cup, uh, got to speak to him, um, and sort of got you know got to got to know him. He was actually quite quiet, quite shy, I suppose. Uh, and then a couple of years after that, I started doing rugby more seriously, uh, and we just we just got chatting. And one of our, my former editors happened to listen to the conversation that he and I were, were having and suggested that when I was at the Evening Times um, that it would be quite a good idea if we get, we get Doddy to, to, to do a column. Now, the Evening Times had plenty of scope to do rugby back in the day because you had the likes of West of Scotland, GHK, um, and, uh, you know, in and around Glasgow. Uh, but um, they decided that, that Doddy was actually a bit of a, a personality if you managed to tease some of the words out of him, and that and that's how it started. And and that was um, this was remember this is back in the day before you had mobile phones. So if you wanted Doddy, you almost had to book an appointment with him. So I became 
sort of friendly with his mother and father because they were the they were his secretaries at the time. <laughs> And um, you would, you know, I would, I would arrange a time. Needless to say, a lot of the time he wasn't there, and he'd have to phone you back. But uh, that, that's how we, we we started, got to know each other. And when I moved titles uh, and went to the Mirror, and uh, we signed up Doddy again for as a columnist for you know Five Nations and World Cups and the likes, and and that was it. We 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 hit it off very early on, and had been been friends ever since yeah so how how did the book come about because I, I was thinking about this and, and doddy's doddy's love of telling stories i'm surprised he hasn't had one out already well if you if you actually uh look at the um look at my acknowledgement in the book you'll see that uh i actually you know actually say about about that that back in 19 back in 2000 it would be uh doddy was due to go with uh, Scotland on tour. And this was at a time, remember, when professionalism was was on the up and up. And he just decided he, he needed a rest. Um, other people had decided uh, that they were going to have a rest. And, and he was just... The demands of playing for Newcastle Falcons and for Scotland um, during the, 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 the Five Nations, which then became the Six Nations, had become a, 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 bit, a bit too demanding. So he decided he was going to have a rest up during the summer. Um, at that point in time, I think he was only a handful of caps off being the top uh, cap winner for Scotland. I think only Scott Hastings was ahead of him uh, at that point in time. And Doddy decided he was going to take the summer off. And that was that was the end of his Scotland career almost. Um, he made, I think he played against the Barbarians again and maybe get called up for... Uh, a squad here or there, um, but the the fact was that uh, after 61 caps, he was um, no longer uh, needed. So he was surplus to requirements. So we, during that summer when he was humming and high, I said, well, if you want something to occupy yourself, let's write a book. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. And needless to say, nothing came of it. And nothing came of it over the next 17 summers that we, we talked about <laughs> Um, but I, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, and you know events uh, as they've been, we've ended up I think with a, a far better book and a far better story than if we'd written it eighteen years ago. If we had written one eighteen years ago, we might have been on a second uh, autobiography. But the, the, the way it is, um, it wasn't to be. Um, he had a, a long bit of his career still to go as a, a player with Newcastle and with. Border Reavers, uh, and you know, then he he moved into other other circles and other spheres in and around rugby. But of course, um, everything that's happened in the last eighteen months to two years have put a completely different perspective and spin on on the story. Uh, so I have to say, uh, thankfully, we didn't write that book twenty years ago, and we've had a, a completely fresh story to tell. Yeah, I mean, it, it really sort of seems to be resonating with people. I mean, um, the, I'm just sort of interested in how, how you went about writing it then. Was that just a case of sort of pinning Doddy down it, with, with some time and, and getting the stories down, or was there a bit... <laughs> It was, um, uh, again, uh, in the book, I said it was as easy as nailing jelly to a wall. <laughs> um, Do- Doddy doesn't, um, he, he's a bit, uh, for any any football followers out there of a certain age, he's a bit like Ali McCoy, that he he understands the concept of time but doesn't necessarily adhere to it. <laughs> so, it, it, when when the offer came from Black and White uh, Publishing to to do the book, you know, I, I I I said to him, I said this is this is something we should. Oh, sorry about that. Something we should uh, something we should go for and something we should we should look at. I'm not saying he was totally convinced by that, but he did um, eventually say, "Yeah, okay." Um, and then, so the book, even though I was I was making copious notes, uh, Doddy's take on what uh, an autobiography was, even though he, he was having some assistance with it, he thought that he just said yes and put his name to it, and I would do the rest. <laughs> and, and 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 there 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 was. Um, uh, there was an element of that, but ultimately, you still—it still needs to be his words, and it still needs to be his 
his thoughts on on subjects. Um, so whilst I could come up with various headings that I thought he might actually want to mention, a lot of it then was disappearing down uh, different roads and flying off at tangents and and sometimes disappearing up railway sidings with with uh, nowhere to go and then having to reverse back out of them again. But he, he we, we stuck with it. The, the other thing that I was uh, kind of pretty certain of early on was that we, we couldn't write this book um, in maybe the fashion that other people would write books. You know, I was born, I grew up, I went to school, I played rugby, I did this, I did that, and now this is what's happening now because there were so many different component parts to the book and to Doddy's life and his story that meant that you had to piece it together slightly differently. Um, one or two people have, have um, actually complimented um, him and myself on how the book um, is actually actually been pieced together simply because it's not a normal story. It's almost like you had to, parts of it you had to reverse engineer because there's more of a story around just now than there is at other parts um, during his lifetime. And we had to knit all of that together. Uh, I think the publishers um, were having palpitations <laughs> um, at at uh, it was it was a bit like piecing together an Airfix model kit except I, I sat for a while admiring the box before I actually opened it. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think they were they were, they were were kind of twitchy, getting closer to deadlines and the likes. Uh, but fortunately, they stopped. Once I'd explained it and once I'd, I'd written a couple of chapters and and I wrote one chapter in particular um, and let them read that. And and I think once they once they saw that chapter, I think they appreciated what the what the kind of story was going to be like. That it was it was going to be a real roller coaster of emotions. And um, you know they they gave us time to actually complete it and finish it as as how we wanted to do it. And I have to thank them for that. But go uh, back to 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 Doddy, as I say, maybe having said all those years, I want to write a book. It took him a while to, to finally agree to it. And then, um, so I didn't actually start formally interviewing him, so to speak, or um, I didn't, I, we didn't start actually any of the kind of chats until it was the end of May almost. Um, and I went with him to Coventry um, for two reasons. One, to share the driving with him because it, it was a haul up and down. And he had to get back on uh, that night to do something on the Saturday anyway. Uh, but also I knew I would then have a captive audience and I would get his, <laughs> phone, his phone switched off. There was no escape. So we, we basically chatted for about five hours down and um, about three and a bit hours coming back up because I drove and wasn't quite adhering to the speed limit. Um, <laughs> but... We, we 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 put a lot down on on tape and uh, once I had transcribed all of that, which I which I eventually did um, part way through my summer holidays in Gran Canaria poolside at four o'clock in the morning. Um, at least we had the best we had the best sun loungers in the in the hotel <laughs> because I was I was um, I was downstairs and uh, uh, got a lot of strange looks for people who thought they were they were up early only to find me sitting typing away uh, and that and that one car journey gave us the best part of about maybe fifteen seventeen thousand words. Unfortunately, I knew that I had 17,000 words and we needed about 75,000. Doddy thought that one car journey was enough to write an entire book. So <laughs> so, so thereafter, thereafter, there was a... a, a I, I was a bit like... Uh, a bit like Annika Rice all those years ago in pursuit of people chasing them around the country, namely Doddy. And I think he was trying to avoid me at all costs as well. So... It, the, the other bits of the book took a bit longer, but again, other bits of the book were, for want of a better description, were a bit more sensitive. And I'd even use the word harrowing because of what the subject matter had become. And the two of us stuck with it, although 
it wasn't easy some days. I mean, one day he and I spent about four hours together and I managed to get about 1,500 words written just because it was, a, you know, I used the, the phrase before, a complete roller coaster of emotions because it's, it's, it's difficult to ask the questions, but it was difficult to ask them of someone who is a really close friend and it was even more difficult to watch him trying to give honest answers so there were you know you can only you can only have so many cups of tea or cups of coffee or um walks in the fresh air uh, until you come back to it but i you know I'll, I'll i'll be honest he was extremely brave at that point in time as well and saw it through and um you know for people still to read the book i won't i won't upset them um or um give away any of the kind of plot lines so to speak but anybody who has read the book will know what I'm, what I'm talking about because it's it was extremely difficult for him to explain where he is in his life and what the you know the consequences of the condition that he has are um but he's put it down in paper now and uh, I wouldn't say he's, he's he's basking in the glory of that because the, the the battle and the fight still continues, but he is at least he has it down in paper now, and that's that was that's a, a real achievement for him. Yeah, I mean, for for you, knowing Doddy so well, were, were there any sort of surprises for you as you were writing the book? I mean, you don't have to give away any spoilers, but was there anything sort of surprised you as you were going through that the process? Yeah, he hasn't a clue what he's done in his career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about it because because he was he, he was permanently in scrums or at the bottom of rocks, but he doesn't. So some matches he has real clarity uh, of of um, things that happened. I'd say he's, he, he probably remembers more about the uh, the off piece stuff, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the the, the play rugby uh, than he does anything during matches. But if you if you if you talk long enough to him. He and 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 through through him enough enough lines. Um, it's a bit like anybody who watches Father Ted when you're trying to explain to Dougal about falling out the helicopter into the zoo, um, and 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 eventually he eventually you know he, he remembers everything that happened because you said you were wearing your 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 blue tank top that day. Well, that's a bit like Doddy. It was <laughs> it was almost like you had to to break it down into component parts for him to remember certain things. But it was it was the other thing that was staggering was that he actually remembered the most obscure and minuscule details of the stupidest things. For instance, uh, uh, again, I won't spoil it, but he remembered somebody's real first name, which I, I know if it was a, a great many rugby aficionados wouldn't know this, but Doddy remembered it because he saw it in the programme and, and obviously said to the the, the, the the person in question, I didn't know that was your name. <laughs> so it was... Uh, th- those, those kind of things were quite enlightening. Um, I, and, I, and again... It, it, this is it's not a book in terms of um, facts and figures and um, you know I did this and we scored these points. If you, if you want to read something like that, just come out to my house and I'll give you some old Rothman rugby books um, and you can you can read those. But it's it's more his take and his perspective on certain things. So for instance, losing Calcutta Cup matches or um, winning. Uh, with Newcastle or uh, getting picked for the Lions, you know, again, the, 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 there are details in there, but it's his, it's his take on those moments in his career and his lifetime that are interesting. Not necessarily the the the, the stats. If, it, if it's stats you're looking for, I would suggest you go elsewhere because it's it, this is this is uh, this is Doddy's take on on things, and um, you know, the, the, there is one in particular that he has used um, in his after-dinner routine for about 15 years, which uh, only now he's actually realised is factually incorrect. <laughs> and not, not, only, not only is it incorrect, um, if, if, if the person uh, who, uh, who, uh, who is, let's say, the name party and all of this, if he ever took exception to it and actually decided to do him for... Uh, for libel on it, he would have a very good case uh, <laughs> because 
He goes, Doddy blame blame somebody for not doing a job and found out once uh, and I had to show I had to show him it online and I had to show him it in black and white before he believed me um that it was it was not the party that he said it was or thought it was, it was somebody else. <laughs> so he has he has uh, issued a few apologies um and has basically said how enlightening it was writing a book because if <laughs> because finally after like 20, 20, 22 or twenty three years he has identified the the real culprit and uh, has has allowed the other person to sort of uh, to 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 uh, rest in peace so to speak he's <laughs> um, he's not going to hassle him or harass him anymore with any of these stories although that to be honest. That's not exactly true because um, before the game in Cardiff, he actually referred to this tale and referred to this story and therefore managed to upset two people rather than just the one. <laughs> so, so, listen, you're, you're, you're in the hands of Doddy sometimes uh, and long may it continue. But, um, you know, anybody anybody sitting there with their, their, their lawyer um, could uh, could actually have a field day with some of the things that he says. <laughs> um, it's quite interesting the foreword from Jim Telford talking about Doddy and, and and having a he talked about having a switch where he can flick on and off between a joker and this this focused committed confident rugby player and it, yeah. it's something you sort of I've noticed in terms of he's, he's sort of taking that into his campaign and his fundraising for the MND is that you you see this sort of you know the, the, the joke inside of him and then there's almost sort of a switch when he you know gets down to the business to really sort of. Telling telling the story and uh, uh, the charity and the cause. Yeah, uh, and, and you're, you're you're right in what you say there. It, it, there's also a bit of him realizes that, um, and it might disappoint a lot of people who who think of professional rugby players or professional sportsmen as being totally dedicated and thinking you know 110 percent of the time how they're going to improve. Doddy never took rugby that seriously. It was, you know, it was never his first sport or his first love. And, you know, again, he achieved everything in rugby because it all came really easily to him. And um, that's probably, you know, the switch that, that Jim Telfer talked about. Uh, and, and again, having gone and spoken to Jim, uh, and and told him what we, we needed for the book. I mean, the 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 foreword in other books um, might be you no know, a couple of hundred words. Yeah, he's a really nice guy, and I've always liked him. And good luck with the book and all the rest of it. But Jim Telfer really enthused about Doddy, really as a as a rugby player and as a professional rugby player, and and you know and and pointed out that Doddy in the in the generation that was the one that went from amateurism or shamateurism, if you like, into the professional status, the very first Lions tour that was selected, he was on it. That's how good he was. And, you know, in the book as well, I mean, Doddy said that if he hadn't met Jim Telfer under the circumstances he did at Melrose, he might never have become the player that he did because Jim Telford brought the best out in Doddy. Yeah, the two of them had arguments and the two of them had disagreements and the two of them, you know, almost it was almost a uh, maybe I wouldn't I wouldn't quite say it was a hate hate relationship at times, but one one was a real taskmaster, namely Jim, and thought he had to be to get the best out of Doddy. Doddy, on the other hand, wasn't for for budging. He's quite stubborn, really, and. Uh, ultimately, I think he, he saw that if he if he if he did certain things, one he would improve, and two, Jim might not be on his cases often. <laughs> but the um they, they were they were they were two. It was almost like a perfect storm, so to speak. That the that, that Doddy's career, rugby wise, coincided with the, the one of the greatest coaches of all time being first of all at Melrose and then with Scotland, and then ultimately with the Lions. And, and I think. For Doddy, that's something that he hasn't forgotten, and I don't think Jim has actually forgotten it either. Because again, he we had to I had to limit the, the amount of space I actually gave Jim because I think Jim and again is about three chapters <laughs> just in Doddy or Doddyisms. Although I still think I still think the 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 uh, the best line from Jim was that basically Doddy went mental when he met anybody because he was just so excited to see them <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, that I did. I did like that line. Um, you, <laughs> so did so did Doddy's mum actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> nanny, nanny quite enjoyed it as well. And 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 again, there are certain there, there are a lot of a lot of different tales and different bits of stories and all the rest of it that are are um, are kind of how can I put it. Um, are, are specific to different people because different people see and take different things out of it. Do you know what I mean? So it's some of the guys in the Scotland team thought one or two of Doddy's lines were quite funny. Some of the guys at Newcastle thought they were quite funny. Um, and that's the thing. It, he, he has he has met and associated with and touched so many people. I think there's there's something in there for just about everyone. Um, and if you read through the book, you, you might get a mention. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's, he's just, um, he's just such a, it just has been such a, such a character over the years and, and continues to be. I think that's the fact that he's, um, he's been so personable, but, but again, I think some people saw the big kind of daft galoot from the, the borders where they stick you to ears, as he says, has been a bit, a bit naive and a bit simple sometimes, um, maybe maybe even in the rugby field. And I think once they played against him, I think after that they realised that this big guy had more about him than than maybe his uh, appearance suggested uh, the first time you saw him. Yeah. Um, I mean, looking, we've just had the game down in Cardiff. In Cardiff um, at the weekend, um, I think you were down there, weren't you? And the, 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 the result... I mean, the result on the pitch barely matters given the just the sheer amount of publicity generated for Doddy and, and for, for for MND. I mean that that um, it, it sounds like it was an absolute roaring success. Result aside, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, listen, uh, I I tweeted after the match. There were a great many of the players um, had been saying that um, it was. They were disappointed that um, they didn't manage to get the result that they wanted for, you know, for Doddy. And I, I mean, listen, I'm I'm very fortunate that I am I'm closer to Doddy than a great many. I'm very fortunate as well um, that, you know, I'm I'm one of the people that he trusted sufficiently to to tell about his you know of his condition very early on. And lo and behold, most of the people um, that he did tell ended up as as trustees because he he saw it as if he told us we weren't going to change our attitude towards him and we, and we never have done anyway. So uh, I I think after the match, uh, again some of the players were um, were disappointed at the result. But you know again on Twitter I said that. You know, uh, I think it was John Beattie had posted something up, and I said that you know players shouldn't be upset at not winning for Doddy. The day was a, a a far bigger occasion, and and they were all part of it, and and it's a much bigger picture and a and a much bigger thing than just the end result. And I, and I, and again, there were a lot of people you know looked at that and agreed with it. Um, and I, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, I bet you Doddy will be remembered long after. Um, Scotland losing an autumn test match in Cardiff and and for me that's what really counts. Yeah. And then late, later in it's not just limited to Cardiff because it looks at later um I think in the autumn tests before the South Africa game there's going to be a repeat of the Doddy Gump from Italy going through Edinburgh is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um I'm 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 wondering how that's I'm wondering how that's going to going to pan out. Um <laughs> I think uh, I think it might have been easier than Rome than it might be in in Edinburgh because I I think the the Italian police just had a look at it and just went ah on you on you go <laughs> <laughs> we we we're not going to stand in the way of about four thousand maddies who all look quite big blokes um are, and um, a great many a great many women in amongst them as well all wearing these headbands and looking like something of a a, a kind of uh, Tartan version of Rab C. Nisbet walking through their city. So there were the, uh, but no, yeah, there, there are a number of things planned, and uh, and again, it's it, it plays into the bigger thing with the the foundation. My name's Doddy Foundation. The headbands, the shirts, um, the tammies, everything. You know, the 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 selling of all the uh, the the paraphernalia and the likes are all going to a much a much bigger and a much needier cause um, and, and to that end uh, whatever happens uh, for the South Africa match 
um, once again, I, I can only I only thank the likes of the SRU. The SRU um, have been absolutely superb in everything that they've done for Doddy and for um, the battle against MND. Um, I can't praise them highly enough. I know some people will say, well, you know, you, you would say that. Well, I would say it because that's what, exactly what they've done. You know, in, mm. in years gone by, I have... Um, been quite critical of, of one or two things that they've done, but in this one and seeing how they have worked in the inside as well, which I think would be a real eye opener to certain people and certain individuals. Um, I, you know, I, I have I have nothing but praise for the SRU uh, and one or two individuals within the the organisation for everything they've done for Doddy this far and everything they will continue to do going forward because you know I think once they've once people get into, into step and into stride with what the foundation is about, then it's something that they, they, they want to stay part of. Uh, and that applies across, you know, the squad of players as well. Um, Doddy's got a, a, a really good relationship with the squad. Um, and, uh, and again, this goes back to what he does at Murrayfield with the uh, uh, Murrayfield experience with his post and after match entertainment um, on the in the hospitality circuit within the stadium, uh, and it, anyway, he gets to know a lot of the the, the younger generation players through that as well. Uh, and I think I can see why they, some of them would have been disappointed after the Cardiff result. But again, it's a it's a much bigger battle um, on all fronts than just one result. Yeah. Oh, well, Stuart, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Uh, the book's out now, isn't it? So um, a, yes. good, a good one for people to get for Christmas. Well, yeah, I, I, I do think um, there might be several people end up with two versions or two copies of the book <laughs> because there seems to have been quite a few uh, mothers and wives and partners and brothers and, and the likes all saying, well, I'll just get such and such this book. Uh, I just I hope they communicate with other family members on well, this well, one. Well, maybe, like, maybe not. Maybe we should hope that the Denny, maybe we should encourage people not to communicate with each other so that they will sell as many as possible. Yeah, well, that's a that's a that's a that's a pretty good call actually on that one. Um, I think uh, I think actually I might just keep my mouth shut after this, just let them buy as many as they want. But no, I, I, you know, it was um, Doddy made an appearance um, before the, the the Wales game on the one show on uh, BBC One, and the the response after that was absolutely staggering. Um, and so much so that we woke up on the Thursday morning and Doddy was at number 14 on the overall sales on Amazon. Now, given given the the, 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 the names and titles and authors that he'd, he'd pushed out the top 20, that was pretty phenomenal. And it's, you know, it might only be a one-hit wonder, who knows, but it was, a, it was a fantastic feeling and he's still, as we speak, uh, still in the top 100, which is uh, an incredible achievement as it is. And that's even before people, a lot of people, start their Christmas shopping. So here's hoping it's a, it's a, it's a top seller, you know, leading up into the, the, the Christmas market. We've got quite a few uh, book signings to do, uh, Newcastle, London, Edinburgh, uh, Glasgow, and the likes. Uh, so watch out for them. Uh, watch out for me as well. Although I have to say, uh, I, I think uh, if you if you get Doddy's signature in the book, it's worth a bit more than on eBay than <laughs> if I sign it. <laughs> But uh, listen, I I don't really I I I, I can I can I can take the rejection. <laughs> it doesn't as long as my own family wanted me to sign it, that was the main thing. But uh, no, he's 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 doing a grand job, and uh, and the response we're getting um, when we go various places, um, for instance Cardiff, um, uh, for instance uh, the the various other events that we've been to, and his his autographed books has been absolutely phenomenal. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Stuart. That's been really interesting chatting to you today.